Welcome to Mom and Mine, a podcast about maternal mental health, from conception to pregnancy and postpartum. Real stories from moms and family members who have made it from struggling to wellness, and interviews with experts and advocates who work for moms and families to get the help they need. We discuss very real struggles that can sometimes be hard to hear, but these are stories that need to be told so that moms and families can know that healing is possible. This podcast is meant to offer information and awareness and is not a replacement for treatment by a professional. Thank you for being with us today. This episode touches on topics that may be sensitive for some listeners. Welcome to Mom and Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Kat. I'm very excited for our guest today, the wonderful Wendy Davis. She is a wealth of information, a beautiful person, and has a passion for maternal mental health. Wendy Davis, PhD, has a counseling and consulting practice in Portland, specializing in pregnancy, birth, and postpartum mental health. She is the Executive Director for Postpartum Support International, PSI, at www.postpartum.net, where she coordinates PSI services, programs, and 300 U.S. and international support volunteers. Wendy is the founding director of Baby Blues Connection, www.babybluesconnection.org, Oregon's first perinatal mental health support organization, and now serves as the clinical advisor and volunteer training consultant. She chaired Oregon's Maternal Mental Health Work Group, convened by legislation in 2009, and the subsequent committee that wrote Oregon's Maternal Mental Health Patient and Provider Education Act in 2011. She is a founding member of the National Coalition for Maternal Mental Health and consults to community, clinical, and public health systems. She is dedicated to improving public awareness and provider capacity to increase resources for pregnant, post-loss, and postpartum families. Wow, Wendy, you do so much. Uh, (laughs) Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm really excited to hear uh, more about all that you do. Um, You've done so much for furthering the awareness uh, for maternal mental health and training. So where where do we start <laughs> with, with all that you've done? <clears throat> Thank you so much, Kat. I am really, really happy to be here with you today. Um, where do we start? Well, I think the first thing is to um, identify that I'm from Portland, Oregon, because we have two Portlands in the United States and maybe others in the world. Um, so I'm from Portland, Oregon. And <clears throat> where do we start? I think when I think about my journey with pregnancy and postpartum mental health, I, I kind of think step by step. And that's exactly how I also work with moms and dads who contact me to get well. So I'm kind of just really accustomed to that. When I thought about becoming a mother, I imagined that it would be a little bit like my mom and with my own unique, you know, kind of way of approaching it, I knew it would be difficult. Um, And I already um, had started working as a psychotherapist. I was really independent. And so I really deliberated for a long time about becoming a mother and uh, focused on my therapy practice for quite a long time. In fact, my first specialty as a psychotherapist had nothing at all to do with perinatal mental health. I specialized in creative process, performance, and creative blocks. Um, And I also specialized then in depression and anxiety, transitions, communication. I worked with a lot of couples. I worked with a lot of individuals. I worked with a lot of parents. But I had no training despite having, you know, college and a doctorate, I had no training in perinatal mental health. And that's because it didn't exist. So when I was a therapist, I know I worked with many mothers and fathers who were really struggling with what I now know as perinatal mental health issues with true pregnancy and postpartum depression, anxiety, and grief, and the very unique things that have to do with what we now know are perinatal mental health. And as a therapist, before I had a child, I, I'm, I love my clients, and I had you know, a successful practice. I'm sure I did an, an adequate job with those parents. But now I know 
that I was missing a lot. A lot of ways to uniquely reach them, a lot of ways to really uniquely touch and listen to the struggles that a pregnant or postpartum family is going through when they're experiencing emotional and mental distress. So how did I learn? I had my first baby and I had a crash course in postpartum depression and anxiety. Now, despite having all the education and being a therapist for almost a decade, when I had postpartum depression, I didn't know I was depressed. I was a specialist in depression and I didn't know. And I always say to people, it's like being in the middle of an earthquake and being a geophysicist who studies earthquakes and not knowing it's an earthquake. And that would be terrifying. So for me, the reason that I didn't know I was depressed is that depression changes how you view yourself and your world. And if you have a baby, that includes your baby, includes your life, it includes your partner. And it's really a kind of altered state where everything's negative about you, especially. So if I, as a specialist, didn't know I was depressed and anxious, all I had to go on was my own fear, which is I should not have become a mother. I was failing. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. I couldn't eat and I couldn't sleep. And it took somebody else coming to me and saying simply, have you been depressed or anxious? I was so ashamed because I was depressed and I didn't know what was happening. I didn't tell anybody. And it took one person my postpartum doula that someone made me call. (laughs) And she was the first one who asked me, have you been depressed or anxious? Well, that was a life-changing question because that gave me a word. It gave me a name. It, It told me what was happening. I started studying and learning and I just learned everything I could so that I could recover, first of all, and then start to teach other families and providers. And um, now I look back and I'm so grateful for the experience. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Wendy. It's so, I I feel like I, I hear little bits of your story and my own story. And um, certainly a lot of us who specialize in this come to it from figuring out and understanding the the profound change Mm -hmm. uh, um, that happens and that, right. Yeah. We're, we're not taught about it. Nobody knows. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. That's so powerful. And and thank you for, sh- for sharing that with us. Um, so you, you were reading up, you learned all that you could and, and where did you go from there? <laughs> it's mm-hmm. really a funny story. Um, in the end, as, as most of our lives are, I, I think often if I wrote the script of my life, it would be so boring. I wouldn't have any trauma. I wouldn't have any difficulties. And and also, magic things would never happen. Mm -hmm. Because it's usually out of a time of crisis. that some kind of, it's like that little flower grows up out of the sidewalk. So what happened was I was on maternity leave. Okay, I had figured out I had postpartum depression, anxiety. I had started to eat again. Mm -hmm. I'd started to sleep again. I started to talk to my husband again. I was enjoying my baby and I was just kind of getting back on my feet. And a previous client called me and she said, Wendy, I've started a project here in Portland and I wonder if you would help me with it. I'm going to do a project that's mom to mom support for postpartum depression. And I'm wondering if you would consult to me as a therapist, because I want to make sure that the women in my group are safe and that I know how to assess when they're at risk, when they call or come to group. I'm going to call it baby blues connection because she was a musician. Will you help me? And it was one of those times in my life where I listened to that message. It was one of the very first messages I listened to coming back from maternity leave. Mm. And I thought, how does life work? (laughs) (laughs) I just looked at the phone and I called her back and I said, 
of course I'll help you. This is so amazing because I'm, I, I had a baby. I hadn't seen her for years and I'm having postpartum depression. I really can't believe you just called me. And she's a very spiritual woman. And she just was completely not surprised at all. She said, well, will you help me? And I said, yes. So I helped her um, set up the group. We talked to lots of providers and, and helpers in our town. And then mom started to call. And we started to get asked to give presentations in the community. We researched all of the other mom-to-mom support groups that were going on at the time. And that was in 1994. There were five in the United States. What? Yeah. Wow. And wow. we just started. Yeah. I want, I want to tell you, and I want to tell people listening to this, that the most important thing I learned going through it myself and in this transition from being a therapist to starting a mom-to-mom support group is that we need connection with other moms mm-hmm. to feel better, to get well. Everything okay. else also, we need everything else as well. We need support. We need counseling when we need it. We need medication when we need it. We need breaks from childcare when we need it. We need the help of our family and understanding when we need it. We need all of it. But I know that none of that would really touch the heart of that isolation and shame that I felt unless I was connecting with other women who said, I have also felt these feelings. I've also been up all night. I've also thought I didn't want to do this. And now I am better. And so from the very beginning, it was in an instinct for me to move out of my um, my role as a psychotherapist alone and then to combine that with being an advocate and starting a group that was free, that I wasn't being paid for, that I was one of the recovered people facilitating. And from that very beginning, when with the design of this group, the idea was that we as leaders of the group would get trained and learned everything we needed to, but then train other people who came through the group, recovered, and then became volunteers. And so I just, I immediately knew that um, what I learned in my postpartum recovery and what I learned to prevent a second postpartum experience crisis was that we are here to connect and reach out and get help from other people. We're not here to be perfect. We're not here to do this all by ourselves. That's true as a mom. It's also true as an advocate. So I was learning literally to reach out as a woman at the same time that I was developing an organization that was all about reaching out and getting help. And so, um, when Baby Blues Connection started, it was a real, it completely changed my life to be now a new mother recovering from PPD and starting this. And the next thing that happened that is, of course, the person who started it moved out of town. <laughs> and she said to me, do you know anyone who can take this over? Now I thought to myself, I should not do this. My baby's 10 months old. I'm back in practice. I just got on my feet. I'm actually eating real food all day (laughs) and sleeping. I should not do this. And one day I saw a mom walking down the street in front of my house with a stroller and a baby. And she went into the community center where we had just put up bulletin board flyers. And I imagined her grabbing one of the tear tabs and calling the number and having it not be answered, having it be a dead number. And I thought, I can't have that happen. I'm going to take this over. I'm going to take this on. And uh, so I said, yes. And I've just been saying yes ever since. (laughs) (laughs) You sure have. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Well, you can't see me right now, but I have tears coming down. (laughs) Um, I am just... uh, Uh, Yeah, you're you're what you bring to this work is so deep and so powerful. 
Um, and I, I, you know, I can hear in your, your personal story, I can hear in your transformation into, um, the, the advocate, just, you know, how much your heart is, is in this. And certainly, uh, you know, I, I didn't know you then, but knowing you now, it's still there. It is. It, Thank you. I mean, I, you can't do this work without being inspired by it. And I mean that in every way. It's very hard to sustain this kind of volunteer and advocacy work if you don't have a passion for it, because it's really, it's hard work. It's very, it's, it's hard work to be a volunteer and you have to have support, but you also, you also, once you are doing this work, you're inspired every day because the um, people that call us, um, now at Postpartum Support International, the people that call us, the people who email us, the people who write to us on Facebook, are um, every one of you is this tender heart that just is having such a hard time remembering that you are a beautiful soul, you're working so hard, and not understanding the nature of depression and anxiety is that it changes your view of yourself. But if you could see yourself through um, the eyes of someone who adores you and someone, and that's the thing about the mom advocates is that we know, we really know, we know yeah. how, how tired and tiny and, ugly you feel that's what I felt I felt all those things I was failing miserably now my god I look back at the pictures I definitely look tired I did not look tiny and I was not ugly (laughs) (laughs) I was taking care of that baby every day and that's what I see in my office and in the people who call us is that moms the what we suffer from most is the the illusion and delusion that there's something called perfection and we're not hitting it. There's nothing called perfection. It's only uh, growth and, um, and doing really doing our best and, and putting, having a commitment, not only to our babies, but to ourselves. So, so for, for, for me, um, my heart does remain in it. Um, Mm -hmm. I'd love to talk about postpartum sport international and how yes. that plays in, because to me, that's really the strength of our organization. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Please, please fill us in. Um, um, for me, then going from leading baby blues connection um, at a certain point, point, um, I then learned about postpartum support international and I became a member of PSI and started finding out all of this, the amazing ways that PSI was doing this mom to mom and, and dad support as well all over the world. And I became a volunteer in Oregon. Um, then I decided to have a second baby, which of course, at that point, when you've gone through, uh, perinatal crisis and you think about having a second baby I thought as many women think I've either completely recovered or I've really completely gone crazy because I can't believe I'm even thinking of having a second baby and I did and in part of my preparation for the second babe was um, to reduce my expectations Mm -hmm. to make sure I did what I needed to for good pregnancy and postpartum care but also, um, I knew it was time for me to pass the torch with Baby Blues Connection to that group of volunteers that came up when I was leading it. So I passed the torch to them. They became the leaders of that group. And I became a, an advisor and consultant. And I started to work more as a volunteer with PSI. Baby Blues Connection, like many local groups, was now a member of PSI. And I volunteered with Postpartum Support International, PSI, for um, from really 1997 until 2009, I volunteered as an Oregon coordinator. And then I joined the board and I started coordinating the other volunteers. And in 2009, I was hired as their first executive director. 
it's a great success story for anyone who started as a volunteer. Now I'm the executive director. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy, happy, love that role. Because what PSI does is it represents this very thing we're talking about, Kat, the heart of it. Right. So PSI does two things and connects them. PSI is really well known for training professionals mm -hmm. and providers of pregnant and postpartum families mm -hmm. and social support group leaders and volunteers. Secondly, PSI provides direct support to families through our volunteers all over the world. So that direct support is on telephone, email, the Facebook online closed group. We have online video groups um, where you can choose to be seen or not. You can just be, you know, you can keep your screen off or you can put it on and you always see the facilitator. And all, all of these services in English and Spanish. Um, and we also have a chat with an expert once a week where anyone can call in and talk to an expert every Wednesday for moms and the first Monday of every night for dads. We have social media volunteers. And <laughs> Kat, you know about all these because you are I one do. of our wonderful PSI volunteers. We're <laughs> so lucky to have you as a volunteer. All Thank you. I, I love being a volunteer. I, I put a plug in for anyone who's considering getting more connected to the maternal mental health, perinatal mental health world is to be a volunteer for PSI. It really is such an amazing way to be connected in your own community and feel like you're making a difference just day to day when people call in looking for support. Oh, yeah, you need support? Yes, I will find it for you. And um it's 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 an amazing volunteering opportunity. Well, we are so happy to have you and all of our volunteers. Uh, it's really that's what makes it work. And all of those all of that direct support is free, no charge to families. So when you think about, we train professionals and volunteers. We provide direct support to families through our volunteers at PSI, and we are a bridge that connect the two. And every time I say that, including right now, you can't see me, my hands go together, mm -hmm. they make a bridge. That's awesome. And we are the only organization that does that. And we will always do both. Right. We will never just be training professionals and helping to create policy for screening and doing all the things we love to do. We love those trainings. We have both webinar trainings for professionals and we also have in-person trainings and we love to go to Washington, D.C. and talk policy mm -hmm. and we love to talk to other organizations about that. We also really, really love that we have over 300 volunteers all over the world who work together to help families because we know how important it is to have what's called social support. So okay. the bridge between the two is what makes it really strong. That what really makes the safety net is that we're always working. Uh, we have dedicated this dedicated warm line every day of every year. That's the 800-944-4PPD. 800-944-4773. So we have a, a core team of volunteers that answers the Spanish warm line and the English warm line. And what we mean by warm line is that you call and leave a message and one of the volunteers calls you back within a couple hours, 24 hours at the latest, but usually much, much faster than that, and, and connects with you with that heart of PSI. We're glad you called you're not alone, you're not to blame, and with help you will be well is the motto. But we always want to welcome anyone. You do not need a diagnosis to call. Right. Think of it as a parent support line. Our volunteers are beautiful. <laughs> They're warm-hearted. They're trained to know what, what is a perinatal mental health crisis not as a clinician who's going to diagnose you, as a volunteer who's going to listen to you and 
give you information, support, reassurance, and then this is the key part about PSI, connect you with local coordinators and support groups so that you can find help where you live. When you go to the PSI website and you click on get help and then locations, you will find that we have what we call PSI coordinators, at least one in every U.S. state and in about 40 other countries. The coordinator's job is to provide that direct support through telephone or email and sometimes texting and other ways of talking, right? To provide the direct support, the encouragement, the information, but then also help the person find local resources. So our, our coordinators all over the world are an amazing team and they keep their own resource lists that's really localized. So people know if they connect through the local PSI coordinators that they're gonna be talking to someone near them who really has looked at what do we have, therapists, doctors, doulas, childcare in my community. That's amazing. There's nothing more rewarding than for, for me, having been in this world, you know, in this field so long to watch how this grows and to watch mm -hmm. what Jane Honickman started when she founded PSI become this worldwide network and knowing that if someone calls and hasn't found help in any part of the world, we will help her or help him find it. And so I'm immensely proud of our volunteers. I'm immensely proud of our PSI board of directors. Mm -hmm. the, the surprising thing given when you look at our website or you listen to us talk about PSI and all that we do, we have two full-time staff, period. <laughs> it's amazing. How does that happen? Right. Because of the volunteers and the board and our PSI members all over the world. So we're always calling on people for expertise, for help, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's the safety net. Of course, as we grow, we get more employees, but really it's, it's an amazing thing when you think about the power of a social support organization like this, that all of our fundraising it, you know, goes into providing those services, basically. We're like a model... <laughs> Yeah. Um, financial program when you're looking at like how much the staff is making <laughs> because <laughs> we're really always putting it back into programs and services and, and developing more culturally appropriate services and really mm -hmm. making sure we're listening to the needs of families around the world. This It's, it's an, an amazing resource. It's an amazing organization. And just that, that there's two full-time em employees, um, the, the, the scale with which uh, a postpartum support international works on and works in is phenomenal. Um, uh, it's really, uh, really a testament to the heart that you've been describing and talking about, and we feel it, um, is that it's everyone who's in this organization is passionate about it. Mm -hmm. it otherwise, that this wouldn't be happening. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's it's just amazing. So for the for the moms who are listening, and and also for the clinicians who want to be trained and want to have more information, and for the moms who who um, are thinking about reaching out or, or don't even know what's going on but want to talk to somebody, mm -hmm. um, both of those camps of people can call into PSI mm -hmm. and get information, and that's what's so beautiful about it is that simultaneously you're both training and helping um, and supporting it's uh, and so the network is growing on both sides the the providers the support systems are growing and moms who are getting the help that they need that that and their their awareness is growing it's just phenomenal thank you for putting it that way Kat I think you're really you're absolutely right that a safety net is not a series of separate columns holding something up mm -hmm. you know a safety net is a net and right. every time I connect with a volunteer um, I'm I know I'm fed to I'm taught to I learn every time 
when I listen to what the volunteer is asking or what, or some intuitive brilliance that they came up with in helping a family. Mm-hmm. Every time we connect with families, we're learning. Right. We, um, we are all working together. And one of the things I always say when I train providers is never forget that the families in your community are part of your support system for families. Never forget that the families are part of your treatment team. Always bring them in. And that's something that PSI naturally does. So I think that for moms and providers listening, you're absolutely right that if you have any questions at all, you can call us. You can call us at the 800 number. We have amazing volunteers on that support line, which we call a warm line. The reason we call it a warm line is it's not a hot line. It, you, don't, you don't get an answer 24 hours a day. You leave a message and we call you back. But our, our volunteers will text and they'll use Facebook Messenger. Um, so a provider who no, wants to know about training or services or materials can go to postpartum.net and look through the amazing website. Or they can call us. Or they can call the PSI office, which is also on our website um, in Oregon. Or, but you can also just call the 800 number. Right. There's so many ways to access support um, through PSI. It's really, really amazing. Um, so I want to talk to you forever. <laughs> <laughs> you have so much knowledge and so much passion. And I feel like we could we could talk again. How would you feel about coming back and sharing with folks a little bit more about the therapy side um, and a little bit more about the the social support side of of, um, helping moms with perinatal mood disorders? I'd love to come back. And um, always, always, you have me. Anytime you want me. (laughs) Um, And remember that it's not just moms, it's dads as well. Absolutely. Uh, so talking about moms and dads and perinatal mood disorders and stress and um, exhaustion. Anyway, I, I would love to come back and talk about therapy or anything you want me to. I'm really, <laughs> really happy to be able to be here with you. And um, I am excited about your ongoing podcast, Kat. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I well, I know that the listeners and and I I love talking to you, so I'm sure people love listening. Um, uh, we'll we'll want to hear from you again, so we'll let everyone know when you're coming back. Um, so thank you so much, Wendy, for all the work that you do and all of the heart that you put into everything. And um, I know I know that the the people who are listening are, are understanding that there's this huge resource out there, Postpartum Support International, that we can all be drawing on to help moms and families in our community. So thank you. Thank you so much, Kat. By joining us today and listening, you're a part of the growing community of people who are aware and concerned for mothers and families during this beautiful and sometimes very difficult time of life. Please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review this free podcast so that Mom and Mind can be found by moms, families, and providers who will benefit from hearing our talks. If you or someone you know is having a hard time, help is available. Please look for resources for help at momandmind.com, where you will also find links and information from today's episode. Thank you for listening and being a part of the Mom and Mind community.